<laughs> Rightio, now on Campbell's comments, and she's laughing beforehand, Stacey White, the uh, half Australian, joins me. Firstly, hello, Stace. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. You've got, uh, you're not one bit Australian at all, but you, your better half definitely is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thought I, I thought I'd get you on. It's a bit of trying times at the minute with COVID, COVID lockdown, especially for studs and, and Woodland Stutter. I'm proud to say they have sponsored me and, sponsored me and, and have uh, for a long time. Right at the minute, this hard lockdown, it must be so hard and so trying to get messaging out there and get out and get it around to, to people and, and spread the word. Yeah, it's been really trying. Like, I, in the back of your mind, you know it's always a possibility, but for it to actually happen, it does make things tough. But luckily, um, technology is so good these days, so we can still catch up with people we need to, but obviously can't be face to face seeing people at the races. So it's made things tricky, but we're getting there. Yeah, and te technology does change things. I was watching your, um, you've got a brilliant video. Go to woodlandstud.co.nz. That's double S. That's the one thing you got to remember, Woodland Stud. Um, and go there and go watch your welcome video that you've put up for this year. That's brilliant. And technology, I know I had a very small part to play in it, but it, it's just come up so good and be able to get messaging from everyone around the world. Yeah, it did come up good. Um, usually I sort of face it myself and I'm still in it again this year, but... I thought rather than me being the one promoting the stallions, because everyone knows that obviously I work for Woodland, so I'm always going to say good things about the stallions. We thought we'd do something a bit different and, and get the trainers and drivers and participants to say their thoughts on each of the stallions. So I think it's come together really well, and it's good to see a different perspective from other people about the stallions too. So, yeah, definitely worth a watch if you've got a spare 20 minutes. It is one of the, it is one of the trickiest things, um about promoting, and I find it myself as well, you do say good things, but sometimes it's quite easy just to keep continually say good things because good things are happening. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it, it's a bit tricky, isn't it, from our point of view that you're always there front and center and, you, and you've got to say those things. I actually, I was just saying to you just then, um, a friend of mine here in Australia, he's moved to Australia from Canada, Greg Gangle, put a tweet up the other day. Um, his tweet was about some beat somewhere and having uh, three, the top three stands in the US by uh, si uh, money earned so far this year are Seaside, Captain Treacherous and Huntsville. But the beauty I found of it, uh, from a Woodlands point of view, the next two are Sweet Lou and American Ideal. So of a roster of seven stallions, you've got three in the top five in the US at the minute for two-year-olds, which is just amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's phenomenal. And, and a lot of people probably wouldn't be aware that um, Andrew Grierson was actually in talks initially around Hunts, getting Huntsville as well. Um, but then obviously Seaside sort of carried on with it a bit more. So we went for Seaside in the end. But we also were in negotiations for Huntsville too. So um, all of that. But to have them, like you say, being so dominant all over the world, not just down here, not just in America, both places, it's, it's probably a really big achievement, I would say. I, I think it's it's huge, and and from my point of view, not going out and getting another stay in this year just to make up numbers in the roster, like Andrew couldn't get Andrew and um, Paul and them couldn't get what they wanted. So because they couldn't get what they wanted, they didn't just get another horse just to just to make the roster look a little bit bigger. Yeah, and that's always something they've sort of been big on is sort of quality over quantity. Not to say that we wouldn't go big if we got the right horses, but I think the way that they've kept it is probably quite good because otherwise you get your stallions starting to compete with each other a little bit to a degree. So um, I think the roster that we've got at the moment, it's full of great world-class stallions and, yeah, we couldn't be prouder of the lineup we have. Seaside, he's hit the ground running enormously in America. Um, he's got big books already booked into him and he's experiencing a bit of troubles at the minute, but he's in good hands um, where he is. Um, it's not for you and I to say, that's definitely for, for the case where he's at at the minute, but um, he he's just done an amazing job in America. Unbelievable. Like We'd sort of heard early on that the trainers were thinking they were, they were nice horses and that they thought they'd do a good job as two-year-olds there but for them to do what they've done is incredible like it's it's effectively what Captain Treacherous did in his first debut crop so um, for down by the seaside to do it as well um, is enormous he's 
like you say, he's in the right hands. Obviously, things didn't go to plan when he first got here, but they picked it up quickly. He's getting well looked after, and hopefully he's out on the other side of it now. So um, we're still expecting him to have a big season in the breeding shed once he gets back on track. You got They're still in quarantine at the minute, aren't they? Yeah, they were actually supposed to get out today, but um, they've just kept them, the time them over, obviously, with lockdown and things. Um, they come out Wednesday morning, so they'll be on fa- all, all All of them will be on farm on Wednesday morning. Very good. Sweet Lou, he's doing an amazing job. There was a two-year-old, um, I did an interview with Charlie Gusman just a couple of, uh, well, it might have been last week, My Charlie's Angel, but um, people are starting to really stand up and have a look at Sweet Lou, and rightfully so. For sure, and kudos to you for that interview. That was a terrific interview. And anyone who watched that race that didn't get goosebumps, um, if you don't get goosebumps from that, I don't know what you would, because that was just a phenomenal race. The horse, the the story behind it even, I think, made it even more special. Um, so well done to you and obviously the team behind He's Charlie's Angel. It was a great win. But he is, he's doing a terrific job. Um, I was actually talking to someone the other day and we sort of came up, because in New Zealand, um, people are sort of not unsure of him, but they're just not hearing much about him anymore. But I think what happens is we get a nice one here. The trainers sort of get them up and going. It might have a start or two, win one or two races, and then it's get, got sold and gone to Australia, so you don't often hear of it again. Um, but his stats are, are, are terrific, and I don't think he could have done much more than what he's done so far in his career, and, and his crops are only getting bigger and better. So um, this next two-year-old crop will be should be one of his best. Yeah, I um, over here especially we've got horses like Aladdin, a piece of Lou just up the road with Greg Norman. There is a lot of um, nice horses. There was one in Queensland the other day that went terrific for Tumby Park. I think owned it from memory. But then you also had the horse like uh, Smooth Lou for the Shepherd Brothers. Um, took out the cup and saucer, which sounds like a, a trivial race. Um, I've done a, a few things with Anthony McDonald and those guys in America, and it is a time-honoured race in Canada to win. He didn't just win it. He demoralised them. Get on YouTube and, and type in Smooth Lou Cup and Saucer. And it's it's so un-American the way he drove it. Um, it was just brilliant to watch. Oh, it was. And I actually, again, talking about races that sort of give you goosebumps, you watched the interview with the driver after the race and he was all but crying. Um, obviously meant a lot to them, so well done to them. But, yeah, all across the world, the Sweet Lou's are doing it. His two-year-old crop in America is doing a really good job at the moment. Um, obviously, lockdown here has stopped all racing in New Zealand, so things have sort of gone on the back burner a bit. But I'm sure once we get up and going again, there'll be more of them hitting the track here too. It was actually inter- interesting you say about that interview. I forgot about it. He actually couldn't walk. When they were trying to interview him, they were trying to get him to keep walking, and he was that emotional. He, he just sort of had to stand still. It meant it meant so much to him, and, that, and that's what I mean. I think the Cup and Saucer might sound like a trivial race to us, but over there it means so much more. It's a, it's a time, it's, you know, your, your New Zealand Cup. Um, it's, you know, it's the Hunter Cup for us over here. I think the way they, um, they hold it in such regard. Uh, what the Hill, he's done a great job already as, as well and it is a little bit of the forgotten trotter at the minute because of how well they sold last year at the trotting sales and and the likes he, he just a bit of a quiet achiever behind the scenes he is i think probably with him his oldest crop of yearlings coming on two-year-olds so there's none of them out racing um so it's only really the talk behind the scenes from the trainers and the breakers and drivers and that sort of thing that are dealing with them at home um but in saying that, all of those reports are terrific, um, which is really exciting going ahead because it sounds like he's going to have a really nice two-year-old crop, both in Australia and New Zealand. Um, in America, the two-year-old racing trotters hasn't been quite, they haven't been having as many races for the trotters over there yet, um, but they're starting to ramp up the Ohio size stakes um, the final of their size stakes is on the 5th of September, I think, over in America. Yep. And he's got plenty featuring in that. So we're really excited to see how they do there. But, yeah, reports here are terrific. And, yeah, you don't hear his name in the results yet, but I'm sure you will in 12 months' time. I did a, uh, an interview with Duncan McPherson, and it's, it's not he's not by what the hell. I don't actually know what the horse is by, but he had a horse over there. It was interesting. He had its first start in a race as a two-year-old trotter and took on the three-year-olds. 
like we sometimes do that over here because we don't have the, the numbers and yet uh yeah and that's where the two-year-old racing is at at the minute as you say that one that was a red mile they're about to hot everything up but it's just um they're waiting from basically like us the two-year-olds are gen the trotters are generally behind the paces Mm. Better's Delight just keeps on keeping on. We don't have to wax lyrical uh, about him. He just does a great job. It's amazing how many sons of his are now standing at stud, uh, which is phenomenal mm. here in Australia, um, especially, um, which is just huge as well. I think we've all run out of words to yep. talk about Better's Delight, actually. Um, yeah, we're very lucky to have him, and we never take it for granted. I was just actually talking to Amory from the office and she was saying that he's him arriving here was his thirty first flight to and from <laughs> New Zealand and America. So thirty one times he's been put on that plane to either come here or go back. So I mean terrific, yeah. So for his it must be his fifteenth year. sixteenth. Yeah. Yeah, it's one so, of it's one of the other ones. Depends which way yeah. he went. it's which way he went first. It's either fifteenth or sixteenth season. Yeah, but, uh, but he just he he does an amazing job. I'm jealous because he's been in New Zealand more than me, which <laughs> that's a, another another bit bug there. Um, we'll keep on with him because we've got a grandson of his, Lather Up, and and I think a lot of the time that gets missed a little bit uh, with Lather Up when people start talking about him standing over here for Lower Long Farms. And actually, I've got Calf's logo there, so in conjunction with Woodland Stud um, standing over here. You haven't actually even got to see him at all yet, um, but he's a he's a spunky little horse. But I think people forget that he is a grandson of Better's Delight, um, standing for his second season. Yeah, and obviously out of an in the pocket, um, the dams out of an in the pocket mare too. So he is combining two of our greatest sires down under, um, which is one of the reasons that Woodlands jumped at him as well, um, because it's a well-known pedigree line but his sire as well was was a terrific racehorse on the track um there's a few in interviews with the teagues about him and what he was like as a racehorse and he ran a second very very brave second um to rock and roll heaven i think it was in one of the big races over there and he went a terrific race but that's another one that's worth watching if you can find it um so he's got it's while it's not the most well-known sire behind him he was a terrific racehorse himself and a homebred so i mean we're really excited about him as you say i haven't seen him yet i was hoping things were looking quite good for me to get over there this year to see him but um that's obviously all been thrown a spin has been thrown in that works but um he looks he's a good size he's not too big not too small he's sort of he is Technically, it can be bred with Better's Delight mares. You have to be a little bit braver, but I mean, the Americans do it. They love, they love those close crosses. And there's already been a, a bit of talk from breeders that they might give it a try. So um, yeah, he'll be an interesting sire. But I mean, his speed's unmatched. You go and watch the video um, that we were talking about earlier that um, I put together, and we got Montreal Teague on there. And he said he's never driven a horse faster and he doesn't think there would be any other horse that could match him in a straight line going head for head. He's a third, he's equal third fastest horse in the world. But he actually done it twice, only once is recorded as being a record because he actually done it over 1800 metres, but his first mile was in that same same time. But I think for Australian and New Zealand race, and that's where he's key, the fact that he does win over 1800 metres as well, which is a, a, something unusual for the Americans. Yeah, exactly, because obviously they're predominantly mile racing over there. So for him to be able to, and it was only, it was his next race that yep. he did it. I think it was about three or four weeks between the two. But so he broke it over a mile, the 146, and then went in his next start over the mile in one eighth and went 159.2, I think it was, but it was a mile of 146. Um, and so he's the fastest horse ever over a mile and one eighth in the world. Um, and that is a big thing for down here because obviously we don't just do mile racing. They've sort of got to have a bit more guts to them. Um, and we have a lot of tough horses, don't get me wrong, and that can go over that sort of extra distance. But to add that speed that he had in is going to be a terrific asset to Australasian breeders. I think it's, a, it's actually a unique... Um a unique little stat i reckon that that 1800 because you just don't get it a lot on too many of the the racing pedigrees that come from say in, you know from north america in any way um we get it with the swedish trotters but not not the not from the americans that's for sure um 
American ideal in Australia is fully booked, um, and I would imagine in New Zealand's filling up very fast. After the winter that he had, you, like from a marketing point of view, which is your job, you couldn't have asked for anyone to do any more with that Queensland carnival. I think everyone had to sit up and say, wow, well, look at this horse go. Oh, honestly. Sorry, the dog. Don't worry, they're fine. <laughs> the dogs are just barking at the people walking their dogs down the road. Um, <laughs> That'll be fine. But no, American Ideal. I mean, Ray Green took a punt taking those two horses over to Queensland at a time when we weren't sure um, what COVID was going to look like um, trying to get there and back. So to be able to get over there and do the job that both Copy That and American Dealer did on the track over there was a true testament to him taking that risk to take them over there. So. Um, but not even just those, like the amount of winners he was picking up all over Australia and New Zealand. Um, yeah, he's just a phenomenal sire. And I think he, I, don't, I hate to say it, but I think he is underrated here in New Zealand. I don't think people sort of appreciate what he's done for our breed here and what his progeny can do. Um, he has his, I think. This season will be one of his biggest for a few seasons because of what he did, he's done in the last 12 months. But um, the Australians have always backed him, which is the big reason why we sent him over to stand in Australia, because it made sense to support the people who supported him um, while still having access to send him back to New Zealand. So, yeah, another great sire that we're very lucky and very proud to have. The thing I love about him the most, I've done some video footage over there for, for that was for Breed to succeed actually with Kath McIntosh, which we'll be holding over again to next year now with collecting your stay-ins and that. But they said to me, go out there and, and video AI because um, they're going to get lather up. And it's quite funny, both horses owned by Woodland Stud. Now Mel Mara lives next door to, to American Ideal and he, he comes into the shed and back and he couldn't care less. But when they go down and get lather up, lather up's like, no way. As soon as they walk past Mel Mara's gate, they know they go. And it's quite funny. It's like, you're the new bloke on the block. You, you, you can't sort of rain on me. And he just has so much character. He just plays. He's like a yearling cult, sort of the way he carries on. I, I just love his character. And he's such a professional horse. And as you said, he leaves professional horses. Colts, mm. fillies, geldings, two-year-olds. 10 year olds it doesn't really matter and you yeah. know the kiwis yeah because australia his book's been full it's been full for about three weeks over here i think or maybe even longer i think he's had to shut it down so yeah. um yeah which is terrific for him and the new one on the block who is standing at lower long farms had one season for you guys over there in new zealand we can't forget and we've got to, we've got to remember him. the dogs are giving you a hard time aren't they <laughs> <laughs> but, but spe speeding spur like a horse and, and mark hughes reminds me of this quite regularly and he is right he was a Group 1 winning horse here. He was a, 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 a terrific three-year-old. He won derbies here and the likes. Then went over and won Group 1 races in North America. Horses don't do that. And even if they do, they don't get, we don't get the opportunity of having them standing back here in, at stud. Oh, exactly. And, you know, if he had the record that he did and was from America coming, shuttling down here... He would be hugely popular and a lot more expensive than what he is. Um, but like you say, he's done it in New Zealand, he's done it in Australia, and he's done it in North America, both in US and he was sort of going backwards and forwards between Canada and um, America. So he's he's been everywhere, done everything, achieved pretty much everything that he could have, and we're so proud to have him. Makes sense to send him to stand in Victoria to us from our perspective, um, to have him Vic Bread eligible in line for all of the bonuses that you can get there and again still having um, access to him in New Zealand for the breeders that do want to support him here as well. So um, he's sort of one of those horses, he tugs on, he runs heartstrings. Again if you watch the video um, we've got a couple of the All Blacks that actually had shares in him. Um, and they sort of talk about their experience owning him and ha what a thrill it was to have a horse at his level that when he turned for home you always knew he was going to put up 120 percent and I'm sure he'll leave that in his progeny and we're really excited to see his first foal I think it's due the first one of Woodlands is due about the 28th I think of this month so we're really excited to see what his first foals look like hopefully hopefully we'll get some um, footage of it here's a great story for Woodlands because of obviously Pegasus Spur 
and mum being a homebred, it's one of the great photos um, though, out on the island together when, when he when he was retired. Um, and that I think is one of the terrific photos, but just a great, it's just a great story. For, for any of the uh, New Zealanders wondering why um, you would send him to Australia as far as the financial goes, because he raced here, um, stood here, and, and that if he stands in Victoria, uh, we have what's called Vic Bread Pure. So basically you get a $12,000 bonus. So it is a no-brainer that it, but he has to be standing in Victoria. So with your association with Kath McIntosh and Lower Long Farms, it seems like a no-brainer. It's not like you're shipping him away because you don't think he'll be commercial in New Zealand. It's purely a financial uh, business decision, isn't it? 100%. And like you say, Kath and the team, we couldn't have the horses that we stand over there in better hands. They do a terrific job and they're getting bigger and better all the time. Um, so we really thank them for everything they've done to help us as well. But yeah, to have him over there, it's hard to compete with those Vic Bread bonuses. Like you say, you get $12,000. Is it for the first maiden win? Yeah, so if, you, if the horse, is, I think, I'm pretty sure the horse has to have raced and then also mm -hmm. um, stands in Victoria. Um, yep. And that, if you win a race, you get twelve thousand dollars bonus. So it works out nearly twenty thousand dollars in by the time you win a race and everything like that. So it doesn't come in until um, I think it's the horses getting served this year, is how it works. I, I might be wrong; might have been last year, but I think it's the one. So it's definitely a little ways away. But uh, yeah, and then I think there is a nine thousand dollar bonus um, and then an eight thousand dollar bonus as well. So um, it's. Great incentive. I know talking to a couple of the New Zealanders over there, trying to get some of these breeding schemes going over there, it would make it a lot more appealing, wouldn't it? Like Because if you can get one, then you can go back to another stadium. Oh, 100%. And I know there is talks and, and um, the new heads of Harness Race New Zealand are very aware that we need to be doing more for our breeders over here. So I think we'll see some changes here and, and how successful the Vic Breed and even the New South Wales and Queensland schemes have been is a good prompter for them to start doing something um, along those lines. And I mean, you don't need to start big, just start small, start somewhere, and then hopefully they'll grow over time, which is what they've done over there. So yeah, hopefully um, we'll see some more things like that here. But in the meantime, Victoria is the best place for him to be. And like I say, still everyone across Australasia has access to him with fresh semen too. So um, it was sort of a win-win really. I'm going to um, do something actually on the bonuses and what, the, what bonuses are available over there um, with Nick Hooper going forward. So it's something to, to keep an eye on. But um, you say about starting small, Queensland's the greatest, anyone from New Zealand harness racing that's not aware, go and watch what Queensland have done because all of a sudden they've just kept stepping it up slowly. And uh, yeah, they're going to be a very powerful breeding state, which is huge for harness racing. Harness racing needs that. Um, with uh, my association with uh, Lower Long Farms, which is or was previously Northern Rivers Equine, we've got to make sure people are aware of the difference, but they're still standing at the same place, but rebranded and renamed Lower Long Farms. Um, I am going to do some video footage because I want people to be aware to see them, um, especially American Ideal, uh, sorry, not American Ideal, Lather Up um, and Speeding Spur over there. I'm not allowed to until the uh, cherry blossoms come out. Um, I, <laughs> the, the weather forecast was great the other day, but Kath's got these beautiful cherry blossoms between her stay-in uh, stay yards, and I'm not allowed to go there with a the camera until the cherry blossoms come out. So about 10 days, she reckons, they'll be um, out in full bloom. So we'll definitely get some footage then. And we might even try and catch up remotely with you, Stace, or something. We'll do something that way when we're over there as well, because um, as you say, technology, there's so many things we can do. Yeah, for sure. It must be cold over there, though, because I'm pretty sure most of our blossoms are already out, which is saying something when New Zealand's already got our blossoms out and you don't. We um, have had a very, very wet winter, and, uh, yeah, everything's a little way behind, even our wattles. I don't know if you guys get wattle trees over there. I think they're only for Australia, but, yeah, they, they are they are a little bit behind, but um, it, it's just... Yeah, it's just one of those things that, 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 that happens. But yeah, please stay tuned to Campbell's comments because I'm going to have plenty of it either on the New Zealand show or, or, or off it. Um, Stace, people want to get in touch with you about any of the stay-ins um, and their rosters. How do they do it? Um, my information's everywhere. But um, feel free on our website. I think you said it earlier, www.woodlandstud.co.nz. Um, otherwise, Facebook has all of our information. Yep. We also obviously have Mark over in Aussie. He's a great guy to talk pedigrees, anything with. He's a, 
ball of knowledge, Mark Hughes. So um, we're lucky to have him on the team. And Cameron Grant, obviously, has joined us this season over here. So he's always more than happy to, to chat to people. He likes to get out and play a bit of golf, but obviously we can't do that at the moment. So um, <laughs> once we get get out of lockdown, hopefully we'll be back out taking breeders out for rounds of the golf. But yeah, any of us are more than happy to help. Um, yeah, check out our website for both the video on the stallions and our details. Cameron Grant, he was looking forward to getting out and about. That was one of the things he was looking forward to, getting around the studs. And he's sitting yeah. at home probably watching this twiddle in his thumbs, <laughs> poor bugger. So and that, it's a bit of a baptism of fire, but that's what I'm just trying to do is, one, break down some barriers between Australia and New Zealand, but also, you know, highlight what is going on. And, you know, like, I, I can't do what I can do, what I do at the minute without the help of Woodland Stud Northern and... Um, NZB and um, Lower Long Farms. There's plenty of sponsors that get behind me. Um, I have no worries with that. But I just, I love what Woodlands do. I, I, I want to get back over there. I love the weanling sales. I was only there for four days. I, I definitely want to get back over. But I appreciate what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job. We'll keep pushing the boundaries a little bit. We'll do a few other things going forward. Um, we might even get a farm visit. You know, especially if it stays in lockdown, we might get someone at the farm to um, get some video footage and we'll be able to showcase it that way as well. But Stace, thanks very much for joining me just for a quick chat anyway. Um, you know where all the socials are. You know where to find Stace. So thank you very much, Stace. No worries. Thanks for having me, Paul. And yeah, hopefully you can get here or I can get there at some stage soon. But yeah, more than happy to help where we can and really appreciate all the work you do. So thank you.